Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing this relatively recent study in regards to the origins of water on planet Earth, and even origins of water in the entire solar system. With all of this based on recent observations using ALMA Observatory, that was able to detect water particles, very specific type of water particles, in a somewhat intriguing star system V883 Orionis that contains a pretty well known baby star. A baby star with a relatively large disk. And inside of this disk, the scientists were able to discover unique isotope of water, connecting all of this to some of the previous discoveries, both from planet Earth, but also from comets in the solar system, and even the gas in the interstellar space. Which to some extent now presents us with a very intriguing narrative for essentially where most of the water on Earth, if not all of the water, most likely came from. But more importantly, suggesting that the water inside of us, and the water all around us, is potentially billions of years older than the entire solar system itself, which I personally find really mind-blowing. You might have heard before that we're all stardust. In this case, it actually suggests that we're not just stardust, we're also super super ancient galactic water. Like, really ancient. Maybe even older than most stars in a galaxy. But let's also talk about some of the details, because here the context is really important. First of all, water itself is not always the same. You may have heard the term heavy water before. And this idea encompasses a lot of different isotopes of water that basically combine either heavier hydrogen that contains a few more neutrons, or even heavier oxygen, or the combination of both. Which basically means that by itself water can be in several different variants. And so far, by looking at various types of water in the interstellar space, the scientists have been able to identify a very specific ratio between various types of water. One of the more common isotopes found in interstellar space is sometimes referred to as deuterium oxide. Here, instead of having two hydrogens, the oxygen molecule will contain two deuteriums. And there are also really precise calculations for the ratio between deuterium and hydrogen when it comes to water on Earth. And here the value is known with extreme precision, which means that we can then compare it to some of the other water we discover elsewhere. Although the actual value is a really really small number. And so for every single atom of deuterium or heavy water, you're going to find approximately 10,000 molecules of regular water. And so by using these ratios, it then became possible to start looking for water elsewhere. Where exactly did the earth water come from? And how was it delivered to earth to begin with? For example, some of the earlier assumptions that it might have come from different comets, because we know comets do contain a lot of water, were sort of proven to be potentially incorrect because the cometary water seems to contain a very different ratio of deuterium to hydrogen. On the other hand, certain asteroids coming from the asteroid belt do seem to contain a relatively similar ratio, so they might have been responsible for at least some part of the water on Earth. Whereas some other parts could have already been inside the planet, inside various minerals, with some of this water potentially delivered by the early impactor that was also responsible for creating the moon. And so here the origin story is a little bit murky. But in general, the belief is that all of this water was already there when the sun started to form and when the early planetary formation took place as well. In other words, the molecules of water must have come from the original molecular cloud. And many different observations of various molecular clouds, such as the Orion Nebula, the Carina Nebula and so on, did discover quite a lot of water that seemed to be extremely similar in ratio to what we usually find in various asteroids on planet Earth implying that water was very likely already in existence in between the stars as the stars were forming. And it was most likely created in the interstellar space by various reactions between various carbon compounds with a lot of atoms of hydrogen, although the true origin is still not known. But despite having a lot of theories and propositions, there was just not enough observational evidence to prove any of this. And because water, as you know, is extremely important for life on planet Earth, with you and me obviously being mostly water as well, discovering the origin of water might also help us discover the origin of life. And so for this new study, the scientists once again decided to focus on some of the baby stars located very close to the very famous Orion Nebula, inside the Orion Molecular Cloud. In this case, they actually focused on a pretty well-known object, the object that you're about to see coming into view, with some of the recent pictures revealing even more detail. Now, because this is a baby star, not a true star yet, it shows us what a lot of early stars, like our Sun, may have looked like in the first few thousands of years. And here, this is a very active object, surrounded by a huge amount of material, but also very likely possessing some kind of a jet, expelling the material to the outside. But because this object is about 1300 light years away from us, not everything is easily visible. 
and so the scientists had to wait for a few new upgrades to the telescopes in order to start discovering new things about these objects. And one of the more important discoveries here involved a detection of what seems to be areas where you can already kind of see what's known as the frost line, or sometimes also known as the snow line. A very specific boundary around the star, including of course our sun, where the distance from the star is far enough for the object to start forming various comets and various water-rich meteoroids that will eventually coalesce, become bigger, and potentially might one day deliver water to other objects. In the solar system, this distance is about 2.7 astronomical units away from the sun. And that's of course where we also find the asteroid belt enriched in a lot of water. For example, that's one of the reasons objects like Ceres, which is a dwarf planet containing huge amounts of water, can even exist as a solid object. Here it can be basically described as a kind of a ball of ice. But despite these observations, it was always a little bit unclear exactly where this water came from. In other words, the link between the young stars and then the comets, or the asteroids, was kind of missing. We knew that the water from molecular clouds ends up inside young stars, and we also knew that asteroids and comets possibly deliver water to other objects in the star system, but there was still a link missing between that interstellar water and the comets and the asteroids themselves. And that's until these recent observations that actually finally revealed deuterium water, heavy water, around V838 Orionis and more specifically showing us a very similar composition or very similar ratio to the water found in the comets around the solar system. And all of this is especially hard to detect around these baby stars because of all of the huge amounts of gas that's hiding pretty much everything. As a matter of fact, a lot of the water gas that should be visible is normally way too close to the central region, making it practically invisible because of a huge disk covering the region around the star. But in case of this particular star, Something unusual happened around it a few years ago. It's undergone an unusually hot event where it increased in brightness and started to basically melt a lot of the water located around its snow line. Or in other words, this outburst moved the snow line much farther away from the star, turning previously icy particles that would be invisible into gas molecules that were now detectable by modern telescopes. Something that's never been seen before around similar stars and something that was finally seen for the first time ever. And so by moving the snow line much farther away, these newly found water molecules were now visible enough to be analyzed by modern telescopes. As a comparison, here is roughly where the snow line is located compared to the solar system. So as you can see, it's actually farther away, dramatically farther away, than what we have in the solar system. But most importantly, for the scientists trying to trace the origin of water, they were able to directly compare the ratios of heavy water to the normal water, and thus determine if it was similar to comets and similar to the interstellar water discovered previously, as well as map the distribution of everything within the disk. With this right here being the overall map. The white stuff, that's essentially water, the blue stuff, that's carbon monoxide, and the green is the dust that used to hide everything behind. Here it's mostly hydrogen, but it's also just a mixture of all gases all at once. But the amount of water detected here was really, really huge. It's approximately 1200 times higher than all of the water on Earth, with the ratio being very similar to the comets around the solar system and, of course, the water previously detected from various molecular clouds around the galaxy, which finally observationally confirms a lot of theories about the origin of water. It most likely is billions of years older than the solar system itself and probably existed in a galaxy for many billions of years before the Sun was even formed. With all of this confirmed and detected, simply because of that one unusual emission or unusual event that seemed to have occurred around V883 Orionis a while back. An event that suddenly increases brightness and melted a lot of ice, dramatically transforming the disk and changing its appearance. Exactly what caused this event is still unknown even today. But I'm sure more discoveries will be made about water and the origin of the substance on the planet in the next few years. As a matter of fact, a lot of recent discoveries have already implied that a lot of water might have also existed on Earth as the planet was forming from the early material. And you can find more about this in one of the videos in the description. But it still doesn't change the fact that the original water molecules, the ones visible around this particular star system, and the ones that will create everything in the star system, and obviously the ones that created everything in the solar system as well, most likely came from the molecular cloud that existed here long, long before the star was even formed. So yeah, we're not just stardust, we're also super, super ancient water. But on that note, that's pretty much it. Check out all of the links in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. 
And maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt. You can find it in the description. Stay wonderful. I'll see you tomorrow. And as always, bye-bye.